All right. We do this. What's up, you tube? What's going on, everybody? Matt Martin here with the weekly lawn and garden show and special guest. Da -da 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 drum roll for Green Dog, Mr. Rito out of Hawaii himself. Ray, how are you, sir? I am good, thank you. I really appreciate you being on the show. Uh, I really appreciate your patience with me getting this set up. And uh, I think we're going to have a good time today. Yeah. <laughs> Depends. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Ray, do you have access to what's going on in the chat right now? I actually do. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, for everybody that's watching, let me know how it's going. If you can see everything fine, because this is, again, my first attempt attempting this. So bear with me. Keep that in mind. For those of you that don't know, it's your first time tuning in. Typically how this goes is it's an open format. And what do I mean by open format? I mean... You ask questions, we provide answers. Typically, we stay in the realm of lawn care and turf management, but if need be, especially now that Ray's here, we can jump into some more perennials, woody, and herbaceous plants. So, it's going to move into that time of the show where we do the roll call. And I'll kind of go through this real quick so we can start jumping into some of these questions. Some people are saying it's frozen. Some people are saying lots of buffering. It is. It's frozen and buffering. Frozen and buffering. Let's see here. Hmm. <laughs> so, it may be because, let me scale down what we're actually, uh, I'm trying to do it in 4K. Let me do this. Scale it down a bit, I think. Yeah. I'm going to change it to... We'll go 720. Let's see what that does. Well, it didn't change it. Let's change the frame rate. It's not letting me do it. <laughs> What is happening? Huh, huh, huh. All right, let me try this. Bear with me, everybody. I'm doing the best I can. I wish I, I wish I knew what I was doing half the time, but I know just enough to be dangerous. Just enough to be dangerous. Is it still buffering and all that? All right, let's see if we have jumped back in there. Are we back in? Not yet. Okay, are we back, everybody? Are we back? <laughs> is this, this is like AOL dial-up YouTube. Uh, yeah, it was an accident. I don't know why I had it in 4K. I don't know what I'm doing. Let's see if YouTube will update this and say uh, everything is working a little bit better. Okay, people are saying that's better. It's good. It's better. Much better. Ready for roll call. So far, stupid 4K. I think we're good. Okay, so for those of you that are just tuning in, this is typically an open format where if you ask the questions, we will provide answers of some sort, some kind of answer. So I ask that you fill the chat with uh, plenty of questions for us to jump into. Again, specialty is going to be turf grass management. So go as complex as you got to with it. It's all good. You know what I'm saying. Should we do a roll call, Ray? I mean, do we really need to do a roll call? We know everybody in this chat right now. I think so. I think so. <laughs> All right, real quick, we'll run in here to the very first. The first one in. 
Josh Miller, thank you about my vols. Welcome, sir. The Lawn Stripes, Colonel Corn, Lush Lawns, Daryl Morris, Steve Williams, Brian Hopkins, Gary Evans, Terry Finch, way down there in Louisiana. Gary Evans, your vols made it. Our vols made it, big big guy. You know what I'm saying. Richard Nettles, how are you? Good, sir. We got Green Doc in the house. John Pinkerton, my... Uh, yeah, it did warm up somehow. RBL Jackson, what's going on? Grass Daddy. Phil Cagle, Mr. Moving Shrubbed all around the yard. David Winch, I finally got it figured out. Somehow, some way, we did it. We made it. Uh, man, there's a lot of people in here, and it looks like everybody has been uh, booting me out. I'm back in, and it seems better. That's what I'm talking about. Castleberry, how are you? Good, sir. Schaefer, long care and property maintenance. John Falcon, Texas Welder, Toby Howard, Carl Bird, Samuel Guzman, AZ Trucker, Tucker Trucker, and Kevin Pickle, Bird Dog, Taylor Coleman, Austin Knight. How is everyone doing? All right, Ray, we're going to move into the first, what looks like, real question of the night. And that is going to be, Ray, when are you going to put out your own 2019 lawn care program for Tiff Grand? Whoops. Oh, my gosh. Ray, here, here's the trick. Ray is not going to give you a program for Tiff Grand. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, it's all individualized according to your conditions. <laughs> yep. Sorry, John Teague, but... It's a little bit broad of a question. Maybe give some more parameters and Ray can give you a stronger answer. Look at this. Hey, this is this is real funny, Ray. I think there's lots of people that are going to be on here tonight. Bird Dog's comment says, you were the first person on the internet to help him with his lawn. And he wanted to thank you for the advice you gave him. Well, he is most welcome. He is most welcome. For those of you that don't know, I stalked Ray on the internet for... Uh, the better part of eight years or so. And uh, and that's, I mean, I, I can firmly say without a doubt, it's because of him. I It sent me into the wormhole to learn everything I can about herbicides. I don't know why, but it was just so shocking to me how much he knew that I had to, I had to attempt to be on that level. So, I've learned an incredible amount. A big thank you, Ray, oh, for everything you've taught me over the years. Matt. Uh, we, got, we got some Canadians in here. That's what I'm talking about. Hey, Ray, why don't you answer this question from Joseph Knapp. Scalp the zoysia, per the su suggestion. Green oh, wait, that's not a question. <laughs> <laughs> he scalped the zoysia, and it's turning green. Let's see here. Uh, Arizona Bermuda grass starting to green. I'm noticing little flying things in my lawn when I walk around. What is it? Hmm. Those are just leaf hoppers. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Yep, leaf hoppers. Don't worry about it. That's a good it. point. Early season. That's probably exactly what it is. I like to know when Epes Hero is going to start giving Green Dock some kickbacks for helping them sell out a feature. <laughs> How big should that check be to you, Ray? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I mean. <laughs> I actually don't ask for anything. <laughs> well, we'll send them a little private email and see what they'll do for you. <laughs> when it comes to warm season grasses, will you get better results establishing a lawn from sprigs or plugs? I'm going to put that one on you because I honestly don't know the answer. Yeah. Sprigs or plugs? I actually like sprigs a lot better because you can keep the turf area a lot more level and the way you keep it level is you roll it a lot after you've established it you keep on rolling it with like a 250 pound roller after you've uh, put down your sprigs and that'll guarantee a fairway or bowling green flat lawn sprigs are lumpy <laughs> so Definitely sprigs over plugs. Absolutely. Absolutely. There you go, John Falcon. Uh, yes, AZ Tucker, this is exactly who that is. Um, uh, J, J Pink wants to know, what is the single best lawn you maintain in Hawaii? 
Well, unfortunately, right now it is a zoysia lawn that's kept at approximately a half an inch. It's zoysia? Yes. Yes. What? It is, man. Stop laughing. <laughs> Stop laughing. <laughs> You'll have to tell everybody what your affinity is towards uh, zoysia grass. It is disease prone. It gets nematodes like nobody's business. And did I mention what this grass does to reels and bed knives? No. How is it on reels and bed knives? It eats them up. <laughs> it eats them up. I mean, uh, there's a reason why I change... Uh, what's called a razor steel bed knife on my Toro Greens Master four times a year. Whoa. Yes. 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 <laughs> no good. Yes. Yes. And I also need to uh, I also need to change a hardened Toro reel probably once a year. The whole reel? The whole reel. Yeah, the whole reel goes. Oh my goodness. Yes, and that's because I'm mowing, I want to say, approximately a half an acre worth of zoysia every seven days. What uh, what cultivar of uh, zoysia is it? Most common one is this one called El Toro. El Toro, yeah. It's qu- is that that's popular in Hawaii? Well, that's the only... Uh, most maintained lawns here in Hawaii are El Toro. Okay. Do you do any of the traditional Meyer Z52? Uh, nobody has it here in Hawaii. Really? Yeah. You know, that's my favorite. What's that one like, Matt? Uh, it's easy. Uh, relatively resilient. You know, it's a, it's a wider leaf blade. It's nowhere near as finicky as the newer hybrids like uh, Palisade that was supposed to be the best shade warm season grass in the history of the world that turned out to be uh very disease prone and annoying to say the least so yeah i just i like minor z52 it's old it's tested it's kind of a uh, standby go-to it just it just performs what's it like to mow Um, matt uh it's an absolute pain in the ass (laughs) it's uh it's not only is it hard to mow it's hard to push a spreader through in fact, it's it's almost painful to push a spreader through. Uh, and again, this is usually maintained at like two and a half, three inches. Close your ears. I don't want you to hear that, but it is. And uh, you know, it's uh, it's all right. It, I mean, it does okay, given given the set of conditions. Ray John Mernick has an uneven lawn. What's the best way to fill the holes, make it flat? Or more even, sand, soil, peat moss, or a mixture of all three? I probably tell them to do the sand and the peat moss. It's almost like a, I want to call it a USG spec uh, mix, and that's uh, 30% peat moss and 70% sand. Oh, wow, yeah. What is that? Does that typically have an acidifying effect? It can, and depending on your source of sand, that may become necessary because I am familiar with sand that is made out of either coral or limestone. Okay, here, uh, St. Louis Louis Lawn Guru wants to know what you would recommend to help lower a 7.6 pH. Uh, he's got a new development where all the the average pH of the lawns is a 7.6. Elemental sulfur? Elemental sulfur. Uh, switch your nitrogen source to all ammonium sulfate. Uh, what kind of turf grass is being grown on that uh, 7.6? It's probably cool season grass. Actually, most cool season grasses are normally tolerant of that higher pH, they may need some chelated iron maybe, but they're not as sensitive to it as a a warm season grass would be. What would you recommend for a chelated iron? Well, I'm a fan, of course, of Beecher. 
<laughs> that was a setup question. See, Ray, I'm going to take this video and I'm going to send it to Feature and I'm going to be like, see, I told you, you need to cut this guy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Andrew Bracken has a question. Do you recommend light contact with John Deere Real Mower 260SL or .0001 inch clearance like the manual states? I guess, I guess he's talking about uh, blade adjustment. Yeah, well... Light contact with John Deere real John Deere real mower or point zero 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 one inch clearance. I don't know. I do not know. Well, well, well. I, well, I yeah. I prefer actually I prefer a, a relief grind on the real blades, blades and blades light contact light such contact that you can push it, can push it with your finger. Okay. So as long as you can still turn it by hand. Yeah. Yeah. You're good to go. Yeah, because yeah. that non contact real setup does not work well on residential lots. Well, Ray, while we got you here, and before we really just start hammering out questions, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about who you are, what you do, where you do it? And how you got there. Okay. Uh, story of Green Doctor actually goes back to when I think I was about 12, maybe 13 years old. My dad hated dealing with the law. He just hated it. And so naturally by that age, I kind of took it over and I made it my own. And, you know... Going to college, I was deciding, what do I want to do? And I thought, hey, why not get into turf and ornamental horticulture? So I did. And that's kind of what got me where I am now. And as you know, some of you on the Discord have figured out, uh, you know, it's almost like you're dealing with the professor. But, uh, you know, that's because I did spend five years in school. <laughs> Ray does not take any crap off anybody. That's just how it is. That's just how it is. He has developed his art, and his his background supports it, and, and that's just that's how Ray does it. And any advice Ray gives you is never, ever going to be bad advice. It will always be great advice. There's a question in here about ground pearls. Do you know anything about ground pearls? Yes, I do. And that is a scale insect that infects the root system of Bermuda grass, centipede grass, uh, to a lesser degree, zoysia. And best treatment for that to date is something like imidacloprid with a wetting agent. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, Kevin Pickle asked that question. Imidacloprid with a wetting agent? Do you use like a just any kind of wetting agent, or do you try and use like Duplex or Cascade? Is there one you recommend? I tend to like the ones that are, you know, designed to wet and penetrate through you know thatch and uh, you know the soil so it's not one of those wetting agents that are advertised to say retain water in the upper you know turf profile I go for the ones that are designed to for example go through uh, you know what they call localized dry spot for example yep yep um, Terry Finch has centipede grass that is greening up before anyone else's. He applied ARA and RGS a few weeks ago. Is that the reason? Uh, probably, probably. Yeah, because the, could be. Because the RGS, as I understand it, makes the grass black because of the humic acid in it, and that black film on the leaves causes the soil to warm up a lot faster. 
The old paint it, paint it black. Uh, who was it? Alan was saying paint it black the other day in the video. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Any economical advice for management of Spurge? I feel like it germinates after it's safe to blanket spray, and prodiamine isn't very effective. Cool season grass and gallery is too expensive. Uh, I don't have any good ideas for you because gallery is it. In warm season grass, we can broadcast something called nitsulfuron, but that would probably kill your cool season grass. Yep. Yeah, I, I honestly don't have anything that's economical in that sense either. Um, yeah, I just, I, I really don't. I really do not. Um, my neighbor is covered in dichondra and asked me to help him. I don't like spraying other people's lawns, but I decided to do it. I decided to just do one ounce of 2,4-D per thousand. Will we see results? I normally do two, I normally do two per label. One ounce of 2,4-D per thousand on a dichondra covered lawn. Mm, I don't think so. Nope. It, it, he, he might be able to fly it if he had triclopyr in there or fluoroxypyr, but other than that, not really. <laughs> yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think you'd be able to pull it out there. Um, lawn is uneven in spots. Should I use roller or top dress it for Kentucky bluegrass? That's a good question. What would you do, Ray? Would you roll it or would you top dress it? It depends on why the ground is even uneven. Because if it's from frost heaving, sure, rolling it. But then if it's from, you know, the ground settling unevenly and most of it is compacted, you got to top dress. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, should RDS be watered in immediately or allowed to remain on foliage for a while? Label doesn't specify. I applied mine today at six ounces per thousand and watered in immediately. Uh, I think you'll be fine to do that uh, either way it, because you know when, when I'm putting out uh, RGS, typically I don't have the luxury of being able to control every irrigation system. So I do have to rely on rain and it may be three, four days that it's down before it actually gets watered in and have had no ill effects or uh, effects that I would say were diminished because of uh, it's not immediately watered in. So um, I don't know. Am I off in my thinking there, Ray? Nope, nope. I mean, uh, typically for non-burning type applications, I'll spray something on and then I'll leave it on overnight for for when the next time the irrigation system comes on and I don't worry about it mm -hmm. uh, bird dog is putting Z on in his backyard in Houston because they tell him it's the most shade tolerant is Z on the most shade tolerant in Zoysia no no <laughs> no whoever did that to you is not doing you any favors I mean there's so no is there a shade tolerant Zoysia Probably emerald, emerald zoysia. Not zeon. Zeon feels in the shade. Yep. Uh, what gallons per minute would you go having a one gallon tank using John Perry's next products? The higher the better. Uh, yeah, I would say at least two gallons per minute and up. Because especially if you're using like some nitrogen-based products. Um, you'll want that higher carrier volume. Uh, Ray, what is, what, what is your most common gallon per minute that you spray with? Uh, I normally am going by gallons per thousand square feet, so typically I'm at one gallon per thousand. I'll up it to anywhere from two to five if I have a good reason to. Like citric acid? Like citric acid, yes. Citric acid, yes. <laughs> uh, Ridge Runner wants to know, what is, the one, what is the, the one most important piece of advice that you would give to a person with high pH soil? Find out, Find out why, why your soil pH is so high. Uh, is it high carbonates? Is it high... Magnesium? Is it high sodium? Find that out and then address it. Um, 
let's see here. Whoa, it jumped down to the bottom for me. Let me come back up. Are EDTA micronutrients bad for microbes compared to sulfated micronutrients? Actually, actually they are not. They are however, not. however EDTA, EDTA micronutrients, micronutrients are, a are a lot less effective than other chelation systems because EDTA loses its efficacy once your soil pH is over, I believe, 7.2. And, Ray, would, why would you say sulfated micronutrients are bad for microbe populations? Actually, they are not bad for, you know, microbial populations because most microbes are extremely tolerant of various introduced chemicals unless they're specifically designed to kill that species of fungus or bacteria. It's a myth. Yep. Stop listening to the tree huggers. <laughs> <laughs> Chris says, I'm using a strong backpack with Pete's nozzle assembly. I have it calibrated for 8,000 square feet and a half gallon per thousand. Can you give me the recipe amount for four speed NXT and Prodiamine and RGS? Man, I do not. I would have to sit and look at the label and figure that out. Just right off the fly, I, I would not be able to do that. I need a pen and a pad. Greener Lawn says, What's up, right? Hey, How are you, good, sir? Hey. Greener Lawn, how's it going? I have a four foot diameter high spot where a tree used to be. What's the best way to level it? Verticut heavily or remove and resod? I'd probably remove and resaw it and then top dress. Yeah, that's one of those things too where, Ray, I don't know how much you, you've seen this, but I noticed whenever I always took on a new property and they, they would cut a tree down and level it, uh, lay sod on top of it, you know, of course you're going to get some different uh, settling rates that take place, but I would often see... Um, the grass fail in that spot in general. More so on cool season grass than on warm season grass, but the grass in that area where the tree was, was cut out would fail. Do you think that was due to excess heat generated by the any of the wood shavings that were still down there or uh, something else going on? I would actually attribute that to... The wood shavings pulling out so much nitrogen from the soil that the grasses literally starve to death in that spot. I get that too when a tree is pulled in a landscaped area and then the stump grinder comes in, grinds it all up, leaves the chippings, and then I have a nitrogen issue until those wood shavings and chips are all consumed and composted. Lush Lawns wants to know if you can expand on chasing numbers as it pertains to soil pH. For example, he has a few accounts, cool season turf, with pHs in the range of 4.9 and 5.2. They're calling around for around 140 pounds of lime. Okay. Okay. My view on that is do what they what they're telling you to do in that case because I have not seen good grass growing on soil with a pH under 5.5 I would work towards getting it as close to 5.5 minimum as possible and of course get your calcium and your magnesium up please because 4.9 and 5.2 is extremely acidic, actually. Yeah, aluminum is going to become very available there, and aluminum toxicity is a real thing. And he's up in the new in the northeast in Massachusetts. I don't know if that makes any difference. I don't know a whole lot about soil composition there, so it matters. I, I wouldn't be able. It's to. important. It's very important. Yeah, is I'd worry about aluminum. I'd also worry about manganese toxicity as well sure sure is it necessary to put down a fungicide and insecticide for new sod if so which is best 
don't unless you have an actual problem but for example if you are putting down brand new Bermuda sod be prepared for sod webworm and army worm just be prepared for it let me go back here I my my camera froze up I had to figure that out for a second uh, let's see here. Would it make any difference in lawn quality to overseed common Bermuda with a hybrid Bermuda seed? I plan to scalp Tuesday, which has me tempted to add seed with a thinner leaf texture. Please don't. Wasteful please don't, idea. Please don't. Please don't. <laughs> because common is coarse. Common has a lot of space between each node. Appearance will not match. And, you know, your overall... You know, growth habit is not going to be consistent, so you're going to have patches of common Bermuda that grows way taller than the thinner leaf variety. Please don't. <laughs> um, let's see here. Can you explain how Dismiss works as a pre-emergent and why it's not effective until higher rates? I can tell you why. It is because once you've achieved the, that... 12 ounce per la per acre of the formulated product, it then forms a layer on top of the soil, and that layer on top of the soil then stays there residually, and then any weed that is trying to emerge through that layer is then killed on contact. However, there is a minimum effective quantity for that to happen. You don't tend to see much of that if you're only at four ounces of the product per acre. You'll see a lot of that when you get up to 12. There we go. I, ho I hope that helps. I know we, we kind of touched on base on that last week too. Um, and, you know, you, you got to think about the way Dismiss is going to work too. So as you get that residual there and its, it's effect it has on uh even the foliage of the plant so i mean it, it really does a good job of um attacking the plant from from multiple points whoa jump to the bottom here when using mesotrione along with sowing seed does it matter if i applied the mesotrione on top of my planted peat moss or before i top it off with peat moss I would apply it before you top with peat moss because you're probably not going to get a ton of weed seed germination in the peat moss, but I may be wrong. How do you feel about that, Ray? Actually, Actually I, would I would probably apply the mesotrione or tenacity after, after all other operations, all are, other done. operations are done so as to not so disturb them, not cover them up, them up, etc. Et Good point. Uh, Garner Earthgas says, think it's okay to use pendulum, which I believe pendulum is, uh, pendimethylin. Pendimethylin? <laughs> once a month on a client's lawn, or is that too much root pruning? Way too much. Way too much. Way too much. Pendimethylin is not very kind as a root pruner as, as all the DNIs are. So, uh, once a month would just be way too extreme. Uh, let's see. In West Texas, have a clumping green narrow blade grass in my dormant grasses. It remains green through winter. Grows in height, but not width. Very spotty. What is it? Barry, send me a picture of that. If I had to guess, it's going to be uh, maybe poa? Ryegrass? Tall fescue. <laughs> Tall fescue, yeah. Coarse fescue. Uh, there's lots of things that, that could be, so send, send me a picture of that, buddy. Uh, can you talk about soil microbes and when they become active with soil temperatures? You want to talk about that, Ray? You normally see the greatest microbial activity, I want to say, over 50 degrees. You know, that, that seems to be the magic number. Yeah, and it continues to increase the warmer you go from that point forward, so... Um, you know, once you, you're moving into 60 and 70 degrees of soil temperature, you know, you're talking about some really good digestive and mineral mineralization action that can take place. Um, 
let's see how much citric acid speak more on sodium okay okay citric acid if you're using this you're to, using this to lower, lower high ph you normally are talking about talking a about pound of it per thousand square foot per month and what that typically does is that solubilizes whatever calcium you have in the soil and when that solubilization of calcium happens that calcium can then displace the sodium from the soil and enable you to flush it out uh do you do do you ever use gypsum like calcium sulfate I normally don't need it because most of the time, my, the soils that I deal with have a lot of coral in them, and that's calcium carbonate. I have, I have a lifetime supply of calcium carbonate, so I don't need to add gypsum. <laughs> For unknown perennial grassy weeds in a zoysia lawn, would you consider an app of mesotrione and simazine? Oh man, moving shrub, please don't unless you want that zoysia gone. Mesotrione and simazine is probably going to kill that zoysia. Dead. <laughs> yeah, for, for zoysia, I would probably stick to one of the sulfonyl ureas. Uh, maybe not uh, metsulfuron methyl, but uh, form sulfuron, Celsius, uh, monument perennial grasses in zoysia let's see can you answer rumors that the 2019 GIE will be the first GIE green dock attends <laughs> that's pressure we're putting pressure on you Ray we need you there oh man, <laughs> oh, man. Yes, Carl Gregory, this is the same Green Doc from Lawn Site. That's funny. I think I think people are starting to realize, wait, is that Green Doc? Uh, Green Doc, I picked up a bag of AMS from my local co-op, and I'm curious if I'm looking at incorporating it into a lawn care program with Green County Fertilizer products. What time of the year should I spray it? Spring, fall, high pH? I'd probably be applying the AMS in the fall because... You're in a cool season area. You know, I can say from my experience, I always had the best success doing it in the fall and maybe like late winter as it's beginning to break dormancy. Um, and then typically, I really wouldn't need to fertilize it for the remainder of the summer. So, um, not to say that what I did was right, and I, I could have just totally been lucky with the cultivar of fescues that I was I was playing with. Um, but that's how I was able to do it. So, um, what should I use to remove cool season grasses, rye, and rescue grass from my Bermuda lawn? Spectacle applied in the fall helped. Have about fifty percent less than last year. Trying to eliminate it. Nothing cheap. I mean, uh, you, got you got Monument or my favorite or of my favorite Revolver, of plus Revolver plus Celsius. I mean, just spend the money. Just spend the money. Uh, Emerald isn't cultivated in Texas where he's got the Xeon, so his options are Palisades, Cavalier, Geo, or Xeon. Oh, man. Uh, man uh, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know either. I don't know either because I generally don't like Zoysia in the shade, period. I just don't like it. I just don't like it. Yeah, uh, Palisade does okay in the shade. He said he just had his tree branches uh, trimmed out for longer uh, sunlight exposure. I would test, and if you're if you're getting less than six hours of sunlight, um, I, I, you need to make sure you're getting at least six hours of sunlight. And if you're if you're less than eight, I, I think Palisades just. From what I know, and I and I, I don't know enough about this to, to advise you 100%, but I would say Palisade would be good at six hours of sunlight. Cavalier and Geo, I'm 100% not familiar with. I'm not even sure I've ever seen it. So, um, I, I hate to say it, I just, I don't know. All right, is Palmetto Sod the best of St. Augustine for shade? 
I don't I don't know because if you're seeing Augustine is not doing well in the shade, that means that it's just plain too dark. You either gotta cut trees or re landscape the area to shade loving plants. Yeah, I you know Saint Augustine in shade for me was always hit and miss too. It's kinda like fescue, you know, where one lawn it seems to do okay, even though you've got you know, 30, 40, 50 foot trees in it, and then you go to the next yard with the same set of conditions, and it just doesn't perform as well. So, um, I don't think there's a surefire answer on that, Carl, as far as if it's going to be a particular cultivar. I think it really just comes down to the conditions and how the the grass ad adapts to it. Um, Colonel Corn has a serious question. He noticed a lot of earthworm activity in just one portion of his yard and not the rest. His thinking is that earthworms is good for the soil. Any suggestions on how to get them to migrate or lure them to the un uh, to the lower population area? Okay. okay. If you see earthworm activity, that actually tells you that your soil is a little more saturated and poorly aerated, and that's why you see, for example, a lot of castings up in the surface. Uh, a lot of times, if you have earthworms underground and they're not you know lacking air or oxygen they'll just keep on working away under the surface and you'll never even know that they're there so it's probably a good thing they're there they already came from the area where you're not seeing the activity more than likely um adding myth or fact adding sand to clay soil is a recipe for concrete false false <laughs> false austin i there's a million threads on the lawn forum .com, uh that you can jump into and i mean it is bitter arguments and uh yeah i mean, we talk everything from capping effects to actual formulating concrete uh plaster of paris and <laughs> all kinds of different topics come into it there but uh yeah so no but in a short answer no it is it is false it does not make concrete um, there was another one just under that that was good. Let's see. Um, I lost my spot. Is there an actual repellent for moles? I've always used a trap to kill. Kill count at 13, but having trouble killing two that are in the yard now. Is there an actual repellent for moles? Nope. 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 Uh, uh, get your gun. Get your gun. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Uh, Ray, Justin said you should have done the stream from his backyard. He would have smoked you some meat. Oh. <laughs> oh. oh. I'm sure he would have. missed out. <laughs> uh, what is a good way for getting moles to leave the yard? Uh, I had a big problem. That's right. Yeah, we're going to shoot them. Uh, that's, I, yeah, I, there's a trap them. Trapping them is probably your best bet. Um, you know, you'll hear, a, it depends on who you ask. Who you ask, you're going to get a different answer on. So, you know, I don't know. Um, I love Celsius herbicide, but why does it work so slow? Will adding carfentrazone or pyroflufen ethyl to Celsius significantly speed up its kill? What do you think, Ray? What do you, what do you do for Celsius to speed it up? Actually, Actually when temperatures are low, when temperatures are I always combine my Celsius with methylated seed oil. And your temperatures where you're allowed to do that, of course, are anything under 85. I also add uh, dismiss to my Celsius if I, you know, want some, you know, fast action. But caution, that can burn. <laughs> yes. There's no doubt about it. Uh, interestingly, Barry Cam Camarillo that had the picture about the grass earlier has what looks like Kentucky bluegrass in the yard. I'm, I'm looking at the picture here, and it looks like a mix of poa. You can definitely see poa annua in there, and you can also see what looks to be like Kentucky bluegrass. Uh, it looks very dense and... Um, Covering a wide area, I know you probably can't see this over the camera, but um, that is really interesting. Let's, see, let's try that again. Okay. It's too blurry. Okay. 
No, I can see it. I can see it, but uh, I don't play what's that foreign grass until the lawn has gotten a round of like Celsius and Revolver or else. I have another one where I run Image and Revolver. Image and Revolver? Yes. Why, why Image and Revolver? Image is actually very hard on a lot of weedy grasses. I mean, that's everybody knows Image or Imazequin for removing Nutsedge, but Imazequin is also extremely active on a lot of weedy grasses. There you go, pop music. Um, let's see. Thank you, Lawn Digest. I sure do appreciate that, sir. Uh, Southern Style Lawn Care says, what's the best all-around spray to spray whole lawn with for weed control in the south, or would it be better off spreading a granular? Uh, Southern Style, man, there are a million ways to answer that question, and we need way more data to give you an, an, an answer on that. It comes down to the species of weeds you have in the yard, the time of the year, your turf type, um, daytime, nighttime temperature, soil pH, they all have an effect on what you're doing with your herbicide program. So while I'd love to be able to say, hey, you're you're in the south, you're in Mississippi, you should you should go spread uh, or go spray three way everywhere. That that'll be your solution. But in reality, that's that's not how this works. That's not how turf management works. So there has to be a certain uh, number of parameters and metrics that we work within to develop which herbicide we're going to be applying. Uh, sorry to cut you off, but it, it, that's just the reality of the situation. Uh, let's see here. Is Bermuda grass... Oh, gosh. I, I almost fell for this one. <laughs> Ray. Is Bermuda grass technically a weed? My goodness. Go, go somewhere. Kevin, go somewhere. Is there a selective herbicide to kill fescue in a bluegrass lawn? Actually, nowadays I would even try carefully applying MSM or Mitsulfuron. There used to be Chlorosulfuron, also known as Corsair. Corsair, yeah. Corsair. And then at one time, couldn't you apply, I want to say Certainty had a weird label where you could spray Certainty on Kentucky bluegrass. Unfortunately, they had to take it off because half the time, uh, the lawn care operators would be smoking lawns with the certainty. It was very rate dependent. <laughs> sure, yeah, no doubt. Uh, here we go. Does anyone know about Harmony St. Augustine grass, and is it a good grass? I've never heard of Harmony. Have you? No, nope, never heard of it. No, nope, never heard of it. Me neither. Um, let's see. Can you use Prodiamine in the fall and use Spectacle Flow in spring for a split application? I'd actually invert that and use Prodiamine in the spring and Spectacle in the fall. The reason why is because the root pruning from Spectacle is not as much of a problem when the grass is dormant anyway. Yeah, and Spectacle has no known instances of resistance to Poa annua right now. So um, applying that in the fall would give you coverage for uh, Poa, and then you can rely on the Prodiamine to cover you through crabgrass, which it still does a fairly good job of. Um, we have Geozoysia in my area, and people are putting that in shade. It actually does pretty well and is very disease-resistant compared to something like Empire. Interesting. Oh. Where are you, Lambert? Uh, Tiff Grand did fine for me in areas with five to six hours of sunlight. No noticeable difference from my 11-hour sun front yard. Wow. No, Tiff Grand is tough. Tiff, Tiff Grand, Grand is excellent. excellent. Tiff Grand is excellent. I forgot. When they first released it, that was one of the things they talked about was its ability to tolerate some limited light situations. Uh... What is a good herbicide to mix in the 100-gallon tank with next products? I live in Central Florida, dealing with southern grasses, including bahia, a lot of broadleaves and sedges. Man, again, I, I don't know what, what turf type you're working with. Um, I wouldn't. I don't know. I wouldn't. Yeah. I wouldn't. I mean, 
Applying all-in-one tank mixes is a road to disaster, especially in warm season grasses. And he's in Central Florida, so I'm going to say that's probably uh, St. Augustine. So you, you talk about something that's sensitive to, to broadcast applications of oversize to begin with. I mean, that kind of takes the cake there. And he also needs to be selective within Bahia. And what works on St. Augustine for broadleaf weed control will smoke the Bahia. Yep. <laughs> Matt Sulfuron. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> MSM. Uh, is, MSM. Is there any chemical to spray to remove zoysia from my cool season lawn? Sure is. Oh, you'll love sure this. Is. Sure is. <laughs> Pilex or tenacity. Yep. Keep it bleached and it will die. It does not like to be uh, 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 abused by limiting its photosynthesis from taking place. So... Pilex and Tenacity, multiple applications, um, it'll it'll take it out. I have Bermuda in the fun, in the sun and fescue in the shade under my large oak tree. Can I real mow the fescue and keep everything cut short, or is the fescue going to resist and die? West Texas heat. Uh, I think he's going to kill the fescue. He's going to kill the fescue. Yeah, I do too. Uh, I, try it, though. Try it. And, and RBL Jackson, I will say this. I am thinking about just out of sheer laziness and being cheap. If I get a real mower for the backyard, just real mowing the front yard. <laughs> and as you know, it's 15,000 square feet of Bermuda in the back, and it's 8,000 square feet of fescue in the front. Should I real mow it all? I don't know. I kind of want to. Ridge Runner says this reminds him of Mystery Science Theater, Ray. <laughs> I think I think Ray and you, Ridge Runner, are the only two people that are old enough to know what Mystery Science Theater three thousand is. I know about it just because my dad and my brother. I'm just saying. Uh, will your reel survive the roots from the oak tree? That's a good point. Um, my roots are somewhat shallow in areas where I had a quarter to a half layer of fine sand three to four inches down. What? My roots are somewhat shallow in areas where I had a quarter inch to a half inch layer of fine sand three to four inches down. Aside from RGLs, what can I do to help root growth in Kentucky bluegrass? Push your phosphorus and maybe add a little bit more kelp. Yep, high kelp rates is going to correlate with higher rates of growth hormone in the plant, which can correlate to higher amounts of root mass development um i live in connecticut and i seeded some yards last year late with tall fescue and then weather got cold quick and seed didn't come up before winter no germination do you think seed will come up this spring i don't know maybe that's a crap shoot sometimes it does sometimes it doesn't uh, let's see here. I need a wetting agent for the summer. Southern California, cool season, and warm season grasses. I have both. So I would say you're probably looking for something to retain water. Um, Aquasorb is one of the one of the ones that, that people have used. Um, do you use any for, for water retention, Ray? Nope. I only use it for wetting down localized dry spots. Uh... I like the uh, pellets that go in the hose-in guns so that I can, you know, apply it a proper amount of water with the wetting agent as well and address the general lack of water in the area. There was a fertilizer I used called Tree Nutri, and uh, it contained, I, I can't remember, but those polymers that would expand to a really large size, almost, almost jelly-like. Mm-hmm. And um, in instances where I'd be dealing with, you know, hydro- hydrophobic soil, those sometimes would work. Uh, they tended to work better when you would aerate first, then apply it, something to, to tear it up really well. Um, but it's not always the best. But in, I want to say in that tree nutri, it was Aquasorb, but I can't remember exactly what that was. 
Um, highly shaded area with turf type tall fescue and always wet due to neighbors multiple downspouts. I recede multiple times per year with an always thin appearance. Any seed advice or mulch bed? Well, the first thing I notice there is highly shaded. And when I see highly shaded, it doesn't matter if you have turf type tall fescue, fine fescue, whatever you want to put in there, perennial ryegrass, it's always going to be thin just because the plant can't photosynthesize at the rate something in full sun will. So you can seed multiple times a year as much as you want, put a mulch bed, in, in, anything that you know classifies as good, uh, as good common practices, but I don't think you're going to have anything which is rip or density. I don't know. What do you think, Ray? Oh, stop fighting the shade. Just plant it in with shade-loving plants. That's my advice. <laughs> yep. Uh, AV guy wants to know, what is the lowest height of cut you've maintained on a residential lawn? Can he keep his Tiffway 419 at a quarter inch? He sure can. Uh, lowest I've ever gone on a residential lawn is 0.2. <laughs> That's low. <laughs> It's two hundred thousandths of an inch there. That, uh, that's pretty good. Uh, let's see. Oh, there's my wife. Konnichiwa, she says. Konnichiwa. <laughs> uh, how bad of an idea... Oh, wait, wait, wait. Richard Nettles wants to know, will T-Nex or PGRs in general limit root driving or length? No. No. In fact, the general effect that I see from a PGR is... It often helps root growth because if the PGR is reducing scalping, that's less stress on the turf grass and more attention, you know, or focus, uh, you know, by the grass on actual root growth rather than top growth. PGRs are actually kind of a good thing. Yet yeah, that energy that that is generated from photosynthesis has to go somewhere. And, uh, and, and so, you know, that one of the plant functions would be driving roots. So, um, you're not limiting the amount of carbohydrate production when applying PGRs, you're limiting, um, uh, gibberellic acid. So, uh, and, and you're not going to suspend. In fact, you may actually divert some energy that would normally be, uh, uh, directed towards shoot growth. And directed towards root growth. How bad of an idea would it be to mix Tiffway 419 and Tiff Tough? Bad idea. Bad, bad idea. Don't, don't bad do it. Idea. Because the Tiffway grows probably a lot taller than the Tiff Tough. And Tiffway gets very stringy unless you're mowing it low. Uh, OSU Turfman says, spike that Pylex or Tenacity with Triclopyr is 16 fluid ounces per acre, and you'll have better control in taking the zoysia at a cool season. Triclopyr is so versatile. Um, have you ever used On Deck herbicide, and did you like it? Uh, I have not used On Deck. I want to say that is a Helena product, and it is a lower volatility uh, 2,4-D special uh, acid are you familiar with On Deck, Ray? Uh, I've seen the label for it. That's actually a really good product. Uh, it's 2,4-D acid and I believe dicamba acid. Okay. And that's that's Helena's thing there that they do with it. And I, I believe they say it's reduced rates. And it has an in-can surfactant, I think, also. Um, and it's supposed to be safe for multiple turf types as well. Uh, both warm season and cool seasons. I don't have a ton of experience with it, though. I've rolled my own. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. I will if I. I will cut the trees if I have problems. Bird dog with the zoysia grass is now talking about cutting trees. Um, that may be the way you have to go. I'm. I'm just saying. Uh, Let's see. Can you talk a little bit about the differences between various surfactants? Crop oil, spreader sticker, MSO, etc. Uh, Pop Music, I have a video on that. Uh, I believe it's called All About Surfactants, but I'll let Ray talk about it while, while we got you here, Ray. Come on, give us some info on okay. it. Okay. Crop oil is 
generally a petroleum oil that is, you know, medium to low viscosity, it doesn't offer a lot of penetrating properties, but what crop oil is known to do is prevent drying or crystallization of your herbicide active ingredient on the weed leaves, and that's how it helps penetration. Now, spreader stickers, on the other hand, are not for herbicides because most spreader stickers form a dry film on the leaves that will hold the herbicide in that dry film and actually hinder absorption. So I don't like to hear people using spreader stickers for turf grass applications unless they're actually applying a contact type fungicide. MSO, on the other hand, that's actually my favorite surfactant because MSO is methylated seed oil and methylated seed oil is actually a very good solvent for a lot of the active ingredients that we do use. So what that methylated seed oil will do is force penetration of herbicides that normally do not want to penetrate into weed leaves. Uh, I hope that answers your question. <laughs> so in turn, you, you talk about it being a solvent. So in, in fact, if you were running, let's say a product with prodiamine, uh, or you're running a tank mix with, with prodiamine, would MSO be something good to add into your prodiamine mix because of uh, prodiamine being soluble in that solvent? It can be, but then the solvent property can also be a double-edged sword because I know personally I do something that everybody says not to do, and that is I run Dismiss or Sulfentrazone with NSO. Really? Yes, I do. Why? Uh, rapid burn down of hardened off weeds. I also do it mostly during the cooler part of the year as well here in Hawaii. Sure. That is not something sure. I, I'll do in August or July or September. Right. Never. Sometimes when you got to get it, you got to get it. Uh, cool season, guys. Don't be doing that in June, July, and August, running MSO with it. Um, Warm season, guys, don't do it either. <laughs> 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 uh let's see uh, oh we got some more info on geo here uh, it's very fine bladed and is difficult to maintain with a rotary mower it would be fantastic real cut at a half inch who does that sound like ray uh sounds like me, uh, sounds like me. <laughs> because he and i have been talking <laughs> <laughs> uh is there anything other than ferrous sulfate that i can use on moss and what time of year should i apply it ph seems okay i'm in long island new york thanks Quicksilver, Carfentrazone. Quicksilver. Burn it out. Yeah. Um, okay, got you. Just trying to decide if I should go apply a pre-emergent or apply tenacity or nothing in case I get grass to come up and I do not disturb it. Our cold weather came early last year. It got frost in early October. Uh, oh, he's talking about should he or should he not apply. Pre this is the guy that applied, uh, that was wondering if his grass was going to come up, uh, in the spring because it didn't in the fall. Should he or should he not apply a pre emergent or should he apply tenacity? I would go with the tenacity just in case he has viable seed that will try to come up. What is a good professional insecticide repellent to get rid of mosquitoes around the home? I like something called Demand CS, actually. What is the active in demand? Microencapsulated Lambda Cyhalothrid. And here in Hawaii, I get very long residual out of that product, you know, applied to surfaces. What is the best way to push Bermuda and Zoysia to spread to cover bare spots? 
NPK plus micronutrients. Uh, that's the best way to do it. And mo, and mo, 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 mo. Don't stop mowing. Mow, low. mow it every day. <laughs> Mowing, increasing your mowing frequency is going to cut down on the amount of stress that you put on the plant that will encourage it to be able to, to spread. So, balance fertilizer and mow, 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 mow. Painting it black is a good thing. You're going to stimulate the microbial activity. You're going to stimulate heat. That is a good thing. But, that's one part of the total picture. you got to feed it. You can biostimulate it. But, you got to mow it. There's gravel bat mechanic Mr. Payjack up in Northwest Indiana. Kentucky bluegrass lawns need seeding to fill in this spring. Planning on adding mesotrione with my starter mix of nine ounces of Air 8 per thousand, six ounces of RGS per thousand, plus 80-20 Kentucky bluegrass of perennial, perennial ryegrass. Uh, mesotrione would probably be something good to add to that. Uh, is there an ending to the, to your question there, John Payjack? Um, I think, I think that's a good start, but I would also probably throw some, uh, some MP and K down too with that. Um, you know, you've got, you kind of got two of your, your pieces filled there. Uh, but to complete that puzzle, you're going to, you're going to want some, some actual nutrition. So, um, something balanced, throw some MP and K in there with it. I gauge how bad of a question I asked based off how Matt throws his <laughs> hands up in frustration. <laughs> <laughs> uh, speaking of MSO and IS, I use Prime Source Duo. This is like a combo. Uh, it, it probably is. I, I don't know if it's an MSO and IS combo, but it, it maybe a crop will concentrate and something else. I don't know the Duo. Uh, Ray, did you ever use. Yes, you did. You used. Um, uh, what was the acidifying surfactant, LI... LI-700. LI-700. Yes. LI-700. LI-700. That was a good one. Um, Prime Source has a generic version of that. That is called the PS-804. Um, and it is just a complete and total ripoff of LI-700. Do you still use LI-700? Sometimes when it is, you know, the appropriate surfactant, especially for glyphosate... Up uh, because of the acidifying component to it? Correct. Um, let's see. I predict my perennial ryegrass lawn seeded in fall won't survive summer heat in Southern California. Could I just mow low to overseed with hybrid Bermuda, or should I do a complete reno before seeding? Kill it. Kill it. Kill it. Yes. Please, please don't, don't try that. I have seen these newer hybridized perennial ryegrasses tolerate the most extreme of conditions. And again, I'll go back to the football field where they continue to kill off the Bermuda grass applying a pound of in a week with urea. And the perennial ryegrass kept greening up. Kept greening up. And they were going one pound of in a week. And it was the damnedest thing I've ever seen. And it was 90 degrees outside. And every time it rained, it would green and flush out like you would not believe. Alan Hain is sneaking in here. I see him down there in the chat. What are you doing, Big Al? Uh, methylated seed oil is such good penetrant and solvent that it will penetrate the plastic jugs it's packed in. Sure will. Sure will. Let's see. St. Augustine Lawn removed 100 square feet of dove weed and scorched with a roofing torch to burn off remaining roots and foliage. Now covered with a black tarp. How should I treat the soil before sodding? I'd probably say, you know, make sure you have your N, P, and K in order, your pH in order, and then just go for it. Yeah, I mean, that's that's a very aggressive way to get rid of dove weed. I probably not, would not have done that. I would. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I would. <laughs> but, you know, hey, it's time, it's time, to, time to do your repair work. Uh, any issues with throwing Air 8 and Prodiamine out at the same time? Can a taint mix them? Uh, I, I probably wouldn't. If you can separate that, separate that. And that's just due to the uh, pH of Air 8. It's going to be really high. And uh, Prodiamine half-life in a higher pH is going to be reduced. Anything to add to that, Ray? No, I think, he, no, you know, it's also a matter of the humic, 
binding with the prodiamine excessively and actually keeping it from becoming an effective pre-emergent. Be careful. Sure. Um, I have an 8-inch brown strip next to my sidewalk. Dormant northern mix. An 8-inch brown strip. I use ice melter, mostly calcium chloride, magnesium chloride, and some sodium chloride. Any remediation suggestions beyond gypsum? Heavy clay, pH 7.7. .7. Probably a little bit of maybe citric acid, but your best friend will probably be water. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dismiss NXT on Centipede, Centipede Zoysia, and St. Augustine. It's okay to do it, okay but to, do it. Uh, uh, to, me, to me, dismiss NXT, dismiss NXT is, actually, is actually, how shall I say it? How shall I, say it? I consider it a snake oil product. Snake oil product. <laughs> I don't like it. Dismiss NXT? Yeah, I don't like it. Yeah, I don't like it. Yeah. Don't get me started on it, and because I will go into a wormhole. Again, it's another product that is just repackaged, two individual components. They combine together, put a new patent on it, and then resell it to us as new technology. It is not new technology. You're taking Dismiss, which has a two, three-day burn down, and giving it a 24-hour burn down. I'm not impressed by it. I don't feel like you're going to get a greater overall efficacy combining the two. Roll your own, Dwayne Sapp. Roll your own. Do not play their BS games. Usually I, I save that for PBI Gordon, but I will direct that at... Uh, who, who does Dismiss NXT? FMC. F FMC. We're going to direct that at FMC. FMC, you take that Dismiss NXT and you shout up your ass! <laughs> They can also stick Blindside where it doesn't belong either. <laughs> yeah! Get Blindside out of here. <laughs> Get it out. Get it out. Um, I've got some Air 8, RGS, and Humic 12. Should I always throw out the RGS and Humic 12 together? Is there an indication on when I should be using one or the other based on what the lawn is doing? How would you recommend that? Humic and Kelp versus just Humic, Ray? I would probably do both. But, guys, please be aware that kelp is actually a plant growth regulator. So, you know, watch out for it. I personally only use kelp when I need to make sod take root, and then I, I take it back out of my program. Uh, John Payjack has a starter mix. Okay. Of a 12 24 12. His concern is germination time of the Kentucky bluegrass and high weed pressure. Wondering if I should use a 50 50 KBG perennial ryegrass mix to allow for better ground cover until K KBG establishes. I don't know. I mean, uh, I'd probably, uh, probably uh, say get your uh, tenacity or mesotrione in there and don't worry about it. Yeah, I don't. I, I don't think there's really a right answer in that, Payjack. I think it just comes down to preference. I think you're gonna have. I don't know. I think they both will have their struggles. I don't think you'll have to be on it any less choosing one or the other. Um, yeah, I, I. I mean, it's just. It's just gonna be tough. Did you see what Toby Howard typed? In yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm actually not for once. Is it a... <laughs> oh, I'm about to read that again. I want to convert a section of my Bermuda to a putting green, approximately 500 square feet. What kind of challenges will I face mowing at 125 thousandths versus what I'm used to at a quarter or at uh, a half inch? Okay. This is Tiff Grand. First of all, your mower setup. That's going to be a challenge. Next is how level and flat you can get your putting green area because I can tell you that at 0.125, you have no tolerance for any kind of imperfections in the ground. Yeah, I don't. I, have you ever attempted to take uh, uh, Tiff Grand that low? 
Not yet, but uh, I might be doing something like that at the Bowling Green eventually. Planting that all in with Tifgrand and keeping it low. My sod grower supposedly tells me that it can be done. Um, uh, here we go. Uh, I'm interested in hearing more on kelp. Why rotate it out of the program? I didn't see negatives before, but want to understand the impact. Okay, here is what kelp actually is doing. Kelp is actually forcing root and shoot growth, and that forcing of root and shoot growth can be out of proportion with what nutrients and resources the plant has internally. So take it for what it's worth. <laughs> Uh, we got the bio sludge documentary coming up again. There's a clip from Ryan Norris channel, time mark 2235. Uh, oh, in the bio sludge documentary, there is a clip from Ryan Norris channel. They put Ryan Norris YouTube channel in the bio sludge documentary. Have you seen that, Ray? Uh, I haven't seen the bio sludge documentary, but I did remember seeing Ryan's video on what happened when he used too much milorganite? Yeah. Well, and you know, I, I've started to to really go down that wormhole and 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 dive as deep into that documentary as possible. Um, you know, heavy metals are a real thing, uh, and pharmaceuticals in in waste products are a real thing too. So. I think there there is some validity that that's talked about, but it's packaged in such a way to scare the crap out of everybody. No pun intended, but it's 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 a scare tactic. It's fear mongering, uh, and I think it's presented much more negatively than it needs to be. But I think awareness to it is a good thing. <clears throat> The kelp will put more energy into root and shoot growth, taking energy away from top growth. Yeah. I actually... Colonel Corn, go ahead. I actually did something bad to a turf grass area by giving it too much kelp. It actually yellowed it out. Yeah, that's that's easy to do. With uh, I've, I've played with some, some really, really high rates of kelp and, uh, and tinged tinge some grass so it's doable cue that pcu quote i am wearing my own shirt i'm sorry how much was too much malorganite and what happened with too much okay, okay. Ryan, ryan shot his shot p levels or phosphorus levels way above, way above you know what's considered you know healthy and adequate, healthy and adequate. he basically unbalanced his soil. unbalanced his soil that's what happened to him that's what happened to him and there's, I mean, once you do that too, I mean, you gotta, you gotta grow it out. And it's, it's, there's not really an easy remediation way to be like, okay, I'm gonna drop my P levels now. Uh, you just don't apply it and attempt to grow the P levels out. Actually, you unless I'm missing something. No, actually, you need to constantly collect the clippings from that area and throw away the clippings until you get your phosphorus down. No yeah. fun. No fun. Uh, all right, all right, all right, Ray. It is ten thirty Eastern time. I'm gonna be calling it here, uh, real quick before we go. Uh, unfix fix my camera. Let's see, let's see if it's going now. It should be, it should be okay. I hit the button. Yeah, it's coming back. Okay, real quick before we go, I want to give a big shout out to one of my absolute favorite things in the whole world. I don't know if you've ever heard me talk about this before, but it's a very real thing, and I'm serious when I say it's one of the best things ever. And that is, for those of you that don't know, that one cupcakeplace.com. Everyone show some love to John Pinkerton and his lovely wife Teresa. It is just, I mean, what they do with cupcakes is un Believable, right? Have you ever had their cupcakes? Yes, I have. In fact, uh, Teresa 
made a custom batch for me uh, as payment for uh, fixing her daughter's lawn here in Hawaii. And how would you rate it on a scale of 1 to 10? Mm, 15 or 20. <laughs> oh, yeah! <laughs> Ray, thank you so much for doing this with me tonight. I really appreciate it. Um, you've been a hero to me for a really, really long time, so... It's great that you got to join me on here tonight, and obviously you can tell from the chat everybody else was was glad you were here too. So I hope you come back and visit soon, and uh, hop on the camera here with me, and we'll bust some bust some skulls <laughs> and uh, give people some hopefully some good input, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, break, right. break some heads. <laughs> right. Thank you again. I really appreciate it. Everybody in the chat, thank you so much for tuning in. Y'all have an absolute wonderful evening. Take it easy.